Today we'll be talking about Dior, the decentralized solution to the Oracle problem. Dior is a decentralized Oracle system that aggregates data from multiple Oracles to ensure that the information provided to a smart contract is correct in a completely trustless fashion. Dior is actually the very first project to solve the Oracle problem, allowing smart contracts to safely get correct real-world information. Now, what is the Oracle problem? If you really think about it, a blockchain is composed of individual blocks that contain transactional information. So something like wallet A transfers an asset to wallet B. So the balance of wallet A needs to go down and the balance of wallet B needs to go up. And over time, these blocks are added together and that forms a chain. But what most people don't know is that by design, blockchains are isolated networks and cannot interact with the real world. And the only way to get real world information onto the chain is by using third party devices or entities known as oracles. And some examples of real world information include market prices, so uh, the token price or, or temperature or individual data queries from a data set. And it really depends on the use case. And particularly in the case of a smart contract, oracles are absolutely crucial because a smart contract is a digital agreement between two parties that based on a certain condition can execute in a completely trustless fashion. And most oftentimes this condition is based on real world data. So oracles have to provide that information. So either the contract executes or does not based on real world information. And if you really think about it, this provides a high degree of control over smart contracts because the results of an oracle essentially dictate the outcome. The question is, though, how do we know that the information being provided to the Oracle is correct? And the answer is you kind of don't. Trust is required. And this is the heart of the Oracle problem, because smart contracts, which are meant to be trustless digital agreements, have to trust that the input from Oracles is correct, because based on that input, the outcome of the contract is dictated. Now, you might say, well, a little bit of trust isn't so bad, right? The thing is, these centralized Oracle solutions have all failed in the past. You know, this is really problematic because Oracles can go offline, like what happened uh, with Chainlink in March of 2020, when due to gas prices uh, really skyrocketing, Chainlink transactions became so expensive that the Oracle just stopped updating. And it went offline. This wreaked havoc in the DeFi space. And... Uh, MakerDAO especially suffered from it because they lost $4.5 million worth of Ether in a, uh, in, a, in a consequence of the fact that their Oracle just stopped updating. Of course, in the case of flash loan attacks, many of them have happened in the DeFi space, but one of the first ones that gained notoriety was the BZX hack, where BZX uses uh, the Oracle of Kyber for a particular stablecoin. And somebody manipulated the price of that stablecoin on Kyber because the pool in Kyber is very small, so it was easy to do. And then BZX thought that was the general price because it relied on one single oracle of Kyber. And it was obviously hacked. But even more than individual reasons, oracles by design seem to be a central point of failure and, and can be targeted because everything is contingent on the result of an oracle. And this is where or, uh, Dior comes in to solve all of the, those problems. So Dior is just like any other Oracle. It interacts with uh, a smart uh, contract or any other use case. But what it does uniquely is that it pulls information from multiple Oracle systems. And then the, uh, this information is aggregated internally and an aggregated result is provided to the smart contract. This means that the influence of any single pool is mitigate, uh, sort of mitigated or averaged out across multiple uh, pools. Now, the thing that you must bear into mind is that not, or, not all oracles are equal. Some have been in the space for a longer period of time and are better maintained. 
Uh, others may be more adept at a specific task. So for example, uh, a project that only exists on Uniswap might get more accurate price results if you ask the uh, Uniswap Oracle. So how does Dior account for that? Well, in addition to aggregating uh, the results from the oracles, Dior implements a reputation score and voting system. So an example here is really simplified. Four different oracles are pouring information into Dior. And we can see that weights have been assigned to these uh, four oracles. So 50% of the weight goes to Oracle 1, 25% of the weight goes to Oracle 2, 12% of the weight goes to Oracle 3, and 13% of the weight goes to Oracle 4. And if we imagine a scenario where we request the US dollar price of a particular asset, then Oracle 1 would give a price result of 1.312, Oracle 2 would give a result of 1.7, Oracle 3 will give a result of 1.313, as does Oracle 4. And in this example, it's very easy to see that Oracle 2 is an outlier. So there's something wrong with the results being provided from this Oracle. And not only is the impact of that incorrect response uh, diluted as a result of the multiple oracles uh, providing data for aggregation, but also Dior holders engage in voting. So what they do when they see the huge discrepancy between the result of Oracle 2 and the rest is that they vote to increase the reputation of oracles 1, 3, and 4, and thereby increasing the weights while Oracle 2 gets downvoted. So its reputation goes down, as does its weight in uh, the aggregation. So based on the reliability of the data, the weights will change. And in this case, you see that more weight is given to oracles that provide the correct answer. And this, of course, is constantly shifting as a result of the votes. So this creates a really resilient extra layer of security for results from an oracle. The DOR token, as we highlighted, has two chief use cases. One is the voting on the reputation and weight of the oracles, as shown in the previous example. But two, it also provides a unique advantage for developers and project owners to uh, pay for aggregated oracle services. So a project typically has to, of course, pay for its oracle services, usually in the form of one token, because most projects use a single token. And if they try to add an extra layer of security by maybe including multiple oracles, they have to pay multiple tokens. But you get all these advantages with a single token without having to be liquid in multiple projects, all from just uh, having a Dior customized oracle. So Dior tokens can also be used to, uh, to pay for these services. In summary, Dior solves uh, the Oracle problem by aggregating data from multiple Oracle systems and implementing a reputation score and decentralized voting mechanism. Bes uh, because the real world data is also fully decentralized, systems that use Dior have enhanced security over ones that use traditional centralized Oracles because obviously the, the results are aggregated in the sense that uh, the impact of one wrong or faulty oracle is really diluted, and two, because there's a dynamic shifting of weights based on reputation and good behavior of the oracle. And then, of course, the third point is that Dior is uh, a very versatile token and can be used to vote on the reputation of the oracles included in the aggregation and also pay for customized or uh, services from Dior. So things like oracle services and... Uh, uh, contract upgrades. Obviously, this uh, video is not meant to cover the full details, the full technical details of Dior, because there's a lot of features that we just could not jump into a very quick video. Things like the randomization of the oracles in the pool or, or the contract upgrade services, for example. So this is just scratching the surface. Uh, in the near future, we'll go over each of the technical points in more detail. So I look forward to a deep dive video soon.